will do today is we will talk to everyone how to approach when because chest x-ray is very common in day-to-day -day clinical practice and uh, when you x-ray how you should approach and in that process we'll be showing you some of the interesting chest x-rays also which uh, comes to your day-to-day -day clinical practice believe me these x-rays what i'm going to show you will all have been treated by me in last more than four and a half decades so i'll share some of them which will be very interesting with this i must thank the lupin for taking this initiative because education i believe education is one thing which can change everything so let me uh, share my slides and uh, Is here, Kahan, right? My sir, slides sir, are visible. No, sir, your screen is visible. You need to open your slide now, sir. ए स्टॉप शेयर करूं पहले इसको मैं शुड आई गाइड यू फॉर द सेम सर नो आई थिंक दिस इज लाइक दिस आई थिंक आई डू लाइक दिस uh sir firstly you need to click on the share screen button sir mm, share screen button i clicked uh, and, and then... in the basic you can see screen screen option so click on screen option and then share sir okay, screen option right. which is now you are now you are open your powerpoint presentation yes yeah. now your slides are visible and just make it your slides on full slides screen slides are visible now yes 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 okay now, now it is perfectly visible. Visible. Perfectly okay. fine, sir. Can proceed, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, as I said that, I'm going to talk to you regarding chest X-rays today. And uh, well, these are my institutes where I have worked. This is how I am going. This is the KG Medical College. Now it is university, and then this is Safi, where I have been director. Then Patel Chest also I have been director, and currently I am working in Eras Lucknow Medical College. I will like to start with this saying that uh, better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher. I don't say that I am a great teacher, but what I am trying to say that. with this proverb that whenever anybody is taking your class don't miss those classes because when a teacher comes to you he might have come to you with a lot of information a lot of knowledge which probably you may not get after reading for many days and reading many books so nowadays what we see in our time when i was a student that there is no word like bunking but nowadays we hear a lot of this word and many of the students they bunk from their classes but i don't think this is a good habit in so any anybody who is taking you must attend those classes and then for, i'm i'm I, i'll i'll share with you another thing that we have i have at least many youtube lectures especially for interest to pg students uc students and 
even the private practitioners who is who is dealing with uh, in their routine day to day clinical practice like i have for example i have a, a recording of how to take history it's a rare phenomenon nowadays but and then how to do physical examination and how to do auscultation i still remember this lecture i took in aims patna and that was recorded that is on youtube and then uh, i have many lectures on how to read chest x ray one of my uh, current uh, youtube lectures was posted i was teaching in era to some of our students and that was recorded and you see that here more than 2.3 lakh people have viewed so what i am trying to say to you that whoever is attending uh, you, you you must go to my channel and you may see those tubes they are there all educative for education then we have got many interesting pulse and chest x rays 1 2 3 4 5 parts matter and luckily uh, we are going to have very soon the manual of chest x ray it is under publication i think very soon it will come it will come in two volumes and four modules and two volumes so it will be a very exhaustive thing for everyone so with these uh, whenever you know the x ray comes to you everybody it is not only the chest physician i say which has to see the x ray everyone who is practicing some day in time he has to look for x ray and when you see the x ray i always say that how you see that x ray there are two approach which is said one is systematic approach and another is global approach when i say systematic approach then what i am trying to say that uh, before finally interpreting the x ray you should see each and everything what is visible in the x ray but systematically you have to make a system that is what is the college a systematic approach and second approach is a global approach global means whatever abnormality most of us has a global approach but that is not a good thing in the beginner as in beginning for 10 15 years you should have a systemic approach so that you may not miss any finding and you should be able to interpret suppose you ask me sir what approach i have at this stage i say i have a global approach because i know that if the shadow is like this what the other structures i have to see so that is the difference so and i will tell you one system you may choose your own system and bottom line of that system is that you should see each and everything in the x ray and it is not only the anatomical things technical issues also see because it can make a difference in inter and when i say technical issues then you should know which side is right which side is left whether it is a plain x ray contrast what is the view is there any rotation significant rotation because that may create changes in the chest x ray apparent changes it will not be there exposure also is very important whether film has been done in this is one of the very common mistake Uh, that film is not done in ideally chest x ray pub should be done in a full inspiration so sometimes it is not done it is creates lot of problem so those things you have to understand and then anatomical issues whatever structure is visible in anatomy like shadows like bony case trachea diaphragm heart phylum mediastinum fissure parenchyma everything what is visible you must ah uh, see that before you come to final conclusion and usually i say that landmark how to decide which is although the landmark on the left side you know frontal gas shadow is there on left side apex of heart is there on left side aortic knuckle is there on the left side 
but sometimes what happens that these 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 structures are not very clearly visible then what we believe is the marker you know when x ray is done by technician before doing he put a marker on either on right or left and that should be the sacrosanctal death i believe so like here you see this is the x ray in which you find that name appears to be written in a different way but x ray looks very i mean this is, this is what this is this is the aortic knuckle this is the left ventricle this is the left dome of diaphragm this is frontal gas shadow so all appears that this is a left side but why name was written wrongly there was some there must be some reason so if you see next x ray here you see x ray was like this so left side and and what i told that this is this is a marker marker has said very clearly well this is the left side and this is the right side and if it this is like this this is a case of a situs inversus heart is also shifted to a reverse to the other side diaphragm this bundle gas side one so it is whole site it is this was a case of situs inversus but somebody wrote the name thinking that that is right and he has not uh, kept in mind the marker then this problem may arise then uh, another issue you know that when you do ap for many times in ordinarily uh, chest x ray is done in pv but when you cannot make the person stand make the person position then you take picture and line down so that is known as ap view and ap view has many apparent changes especially it appears that there may be some cardiomegaly but when the same person has if when when pav was done then you see that that whatever apparent cardiomegaly was there so film has been done in expiratory phase inspiratory phase everything is important when you read what i am trying to say sometimes you order for lateral view lateral view is basically ordered for localization of lobes or segment or shadows somewhere hidden area of lung like retrocardiac area suppose you get a lateral view you may you may find retrocardiac area very clearly mediastinal lesions you may find which mediastinum it is you may order it so these are the common indications and another view what we see sometimes is is a lateral decubitus view and that is usually done in infra pulmonary effusion main indication of lateral decubitus view is this and another view what is used to be done previously still it is done but since advent of ct and other things this is this is now rarely done but in a simple way lordotic view means when x ray stands like a lord are used to tilt the tube by 45 degree downwards then this is known as lordotic view and indications are only two if you want to see the retroclavicular area behind the clavicle if there is some shadow you can see in this view very clearly and then if there is a middle lobe collapse middle lobe collapse middle lobe is a very small lobe when it collapses it further gets smaller so not visible in pe and lateral view but uh, it can be very typically in lordotic and that is you know this lady i saw her 93 had normal looking chest x ray even lateral view had not shown any abnormal finding but when the lordotic view was done you see that this is the view where there is a typical textbook picture of a middle lobe collapse so middle lobe collapse you have to you have to you have to see like this right in lordotic view is one of the main indication i hope my pointer is visible and then uh, middle lobe collapse and then you see that uh, uh, another 
area which is normal looking chest x-ray but then you find that there is some shadow appears to be here behind the clavicle. This is another, if you want to visualize it clearly, this is another indication of a LADA, although it will be visible in a CT scan today, but LADATIC view will also see that here you find shadows are here. That is localized in LADATIC. That was also localized in CT thorax. So another point while you read the X-ray is a rotation. And rotation is decided by very simple measure that this is a mid-spinal line you draw. I think next picture we have. Uh, this is the this is the this is the mid-spinal line you draw line, and then you find uh, medial end of clavicle on the left side and on the right side, you see this, this distance on the right side is more. So patient has rotated. And if you want to level this rotation in an in anterior oblique, and so it will be left anterior oblique rotation. Why I'm telling you rotation? Because rotation can create many apparent changes. Like anterior oblique rotation may create heart and trachea. Suppose this is a left anterior oblique rotation. So heart and trachea, it appears that it is shifted onto the right side. And diaphragm might be raised on the same side, on left side it may be raised. And then there will be higher prominence on the opposite side. So unless you detect rotation from the beginning, you may likely to misinterpret these x-rays. And lung field even may look hyperlucent on opposite side. These are, the, these are the changes which have been described after rotation. So one has to see very clearly while seeing the x-ray whether there is any uh, obvious rotation or not. And expiratory film, I just talked to you that there is, if the film has not been done in a full inspiration, there might be some apparent cardiomegaly, both the domes of diaphragm might be raised, and clouding of lung bases. Lung bases, you may say, you may you may diagnose pneumonia if it is film is expiratory. So though be, be, be careful. Like you know, this, this lady, when when X-ray done in an expiratory view, expiratory film, this is expiratory film, as you see that diaphragm is quite up both. And when inspiratory view was done on the literally same day, you can find the difference in the heart size. So these are the technical issues one has to be very careful. Then after some technical, so technical issue, I always say rotation is very important. Whether film has been done in a full inspiration or not, that is also very important. At least these two things are very important in technical. I know that many people are misdiagnosed, misclassified because there is a rotation, because the film has not been done in a full inspiration. So these problems do arise. So be careful while reading the X. And then after the, these um, technical points, you come to know what anatomical points. In anatomy, what you actually uh, see, like you see soft tissue, bony case, kuch khani ke. bony case, trachea, diaphragm, heart, hilum, mediastinum, fissure, and parenchyma. This is what well, this is the sequence. So you start from you may choose your own sequence, but I'm telling you, I've told you one sequence. Idea of this sequencing is that you should not miss what what we in a global approach, what happens? You will see the parenchyma first and rest of the tissue you, because most of the findings are in the lung parenchyma. But in a systemic view, parenchyma you see in the end. That is, that, that is the main difference in system. Soft tissue shadow, you may see many things like breast shadows, maybe absent, nipple shadows, very important subcutaneous emphysema. You may see so many things in a subcutaneous plane. And then I, I'll start with one example that this is, you know, 
This lady, I saw her on 98 when I was head in KGMC. She came in, into my room weeping. I said, why, why you are weeping? What is the issue? So she said, sir, I have no problem, but somebody has started anti-TB drug. So if you see very, um, I mean, and uh, when uh, one all, if you if you see very carefully, definitely there's a shadow on the left upper jaw, and that was the reason why somebody has started, and you also see there is some rotation also on the left anterior oblique rotation. So all these has created what is what is this shadow? And when I when I examined her, I found there's no finding, nothing. She she was asymptomatic, and then this was supposed to be the plates of hair because you know this was her hair, and that has cast a shadow. So with that, a rule exists. If you see very carefully, the origin of this shadow you can trace outside the confines of the chest. And rule says that if and when when her hair was disturbed, the shadow has disappeared. So that has proven that this was the plates of hairs. And here you see very carefully, uh, this is an example that if some shadow is here and you can trace its origin to outside of the chest, the so rule says that if any shadow, origin of which you can trace Outside the confines of the chest wall, this extra thoracic shadow. This rule you have to always remember. As you see, shadow is here, but you can trace it out, its origin from outside. Uh, then you have to look for the, after soft tissue, you have seen. You have looked for the bony case. And in bony case, of course, you can look for clavicle ribs intercostal spaces, the spines. But then uh, what you have to, this is the, uh, how to recognize rib, that is a very important rule. I always say that how to recognize rib. Rule is that first anterior end, just below the clavicle is the anterior end of the first rib. You see, this is the clavicle. And th this is the anterior end and this is a posterior end. So first anterior end, it is coming. It is just, it is a, it means anterior end of the first rib. And this is the second, this is the third, this is fourth, fifth. This should have been numbered. You know, this is, this is, this is a, this is a first anterior, this is second anterior, this is third, this is fourth, this is fifth, usually fifth and sixth anterior is visible in PA view, in full inspiration. Likewise, on the, on the left side, same thing. These are the posterior ends. So this, these are the anterior ends, and, the, and then, then, then you trace it. Usually, first two ribs are traced anteriorly. Then you go, second rib you trace, and then third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten ribs are visible. In, that is how you count. the rib is very important. And when same time rules say that if any anterior end is just below the, just above the first rib, rule says it should be a cervical rib. Now here you see, this is the clavicle. This is the anterior end of the first rib. And you see above it, you find another thin rib. Not on this side, even on this side also, you see another. These are bilateral cervical rib. That is how you recognize. Bilateral cervical rib, maybe with symptom, maybe without symptom, but you have to recognize. So, another, when you read bony case, you find there's a lot of uh, punched out areas in clavicle, in some of the ribs, even some, even humerus. So, these things are there. And it was finally diagnosed as case of, now you know, in the skull, there's a punch out area. This is very typical X-ray of multiple myeloma. Uh, then uh, the, there might be erosion of the ribs. You have to detect it. 
And if you don't see carefully, you may not be able to detect it. Erosion has multiple causes, but it could have one of the differential diagnoses is malignancy also, but it may happen in tuberculosis also, rarely. So that you have to be take care of. Like, you know, here in this, she, is a, she was lady around 50 years and had complaints of chest pain. And you see, there, there was a rounded opacity. And if you see carefully, see the trace the ribs around this shadow, you know this, this rib appears to be thinned out. So there is some destruction in the rib. That was the reason of chest pain. And if you see uh, in the magnified view, you know that, that is the rib is coming up. And then it is thinning here. Next rib is normal, but it is thin. So shadow with the rib destruction, most of the time it is malignant and it was diagnosed as adenocarcinoma. So that makes the difference. Even in this gentle young man, you see there's a swelling. If you, if you, if you read this x-ray carefully, if you compare the soft tissue at this place, soft tissue at this place, there's a bulging in the soft tissue. And then if you count the ribs, you find this is a first rib, this is a second rib, and then second rib is here, then third, fourth posterior, fifth posterior, sixth rib posterior, seventh. You know, seventh rib is, appears to be cut from here. Seven, eight, nine, tenth, all the four ribs have been eaten away by this shadow. So there was a subcutaneous plane man, there was a mass lesion and that has eroded the ribs and this was finally diagnosed as there's nothing in the chest but it was soft tissue shadow uh, which has eroded the ribs and that is ultimately diagnosed as sarcoma. Uh, another man, old man, chronic smoker had again chest pain. Chest x-ray you see not very clear why he had the chest pain. But then uh, uh, when um, uh, lateral view was done, it was hardly any, but something is looking that something may be here, but not very informative. But when the CT scan was done, you know the vertebra has been eaten away by this mass lesion. So that was very clear that this has diagnosed as case of uh, rib destruction, lung cancer. Same time, when you have read the bony case, you go to the diaphragms. When you see the diaphragm, you should look for its position, shape, both the angles, costophrenic and cardiophrenic, and then gas under the diaphragm. Now you should realize that normal level of the diaphragm, normally right side is higher up than the left. Right may be higher up, usually by one space, in one space, that there will be more difference. Sometimes less difference, sometimes more difference. This is a normally can be found. And uh, bilateral raised diaphragm, I always say the bilateral raised, which may be because of the technical expiratory film, so fine film, and then uh, abdominal causes. If it is intrathoracic, there must be some. Um, Fibrotic lesion, both sides, that may cause that. And unilateral, you know, to, uh, to, uh, usually in the chest lesion, it is the unilateral raised diaphragm. And unilateral raised diaphragm, I always say that there are five causes. Neuroparalysis, mechanical causes, Developmental causes and infrapulmonary. Whenever you see a one side raised dome of diaphragm, paralysis means something there in the transverse myelitis, something there in the mediastinal lymph node, neck lymph node that may compress the phrenic nerve and that may cause raised dome of diaphragm. Mechanical means some fibrosis, some collapse that may again raise the diaphragm. Developmental, I'll show you condition known as eventration that may be raised tomorrow. 
spastic something below the diaphragm. Suppose somebody has liver abscess, subphrenic abscess, diaphragm will be raised. And one condition is infrapulmonary effusion. This is a type of a pleural effusion, which is usually not insisted. There, it appears that diaphragm is elevated. That the are the causes. Neuroparalysis, I will not go in into details, but you see, here you see, if you read x-ray carefully, this left dome of diaphragm appears to be raised. And this is possibly because of there's a mediastinal shadows. So this has caused paraphrenic now involvement, and that has caused the left, left lobe, left diaphragm is raised. So Mechanical, I have already told you, there's a fibrosis, collapse, then it may cause the mechanical disturbance. Yeah. A developmental, I said, eventration is a very common, well, not very rare, not very rare also, but sometimes it is seen, and in which, you know, eventration is mostly on the left side, and where you find that left dome of diaphragm is highly elevated. It will remain as such. Patient hardly has any symptom, but only problem is there in that. Okay. Spastic, I said, subphrenic abscess like this. Here you find right dome of diaphragm is raised. Why it was raised? Because of the liver abscess. And when somebody has tried to aspirate it, some air was introduced into the, that space that is causing, so it was a subclinic abscess. Infrapulmonary effusion is another, you know, on left side, infrapulmonary effusion presents differently. The diaphragm appears to be quite thick. Left, left one, after the treatment, it was infrapulmonary effusion left side, and after the treatment, you know, you can compare that diaphragm has become normal. And on the right side, same picture, you know, here also you feel that, right, believe me, this X-ray was report was written normal, but you find that left dome of, a right dome of diaphragm is elevated, and there was a lateral sifting of the highest point of the diaphragm, that has clearly showed that this is an example of it. It may be infrapulmonary effusion. And when right lateral decubitus view was done, you see the fluid has sifted. So it is not insisted effusion, but some of the patients of pleural effusion, they behave like this. Then you have to concentrate on both the angle, costophrenic angle. Many times we see that pleural effusion is the main cause. But more than pleural there are many more causes. And bilateral costophrenic obliteration may also happen in COPD, where there is an uh, overinflated chest and costophrenic muscle slips are visible. So that obliterates the costophrenic. But that is not clear. Gas under diaphragm, you may see, you know, gas under normally, you see gas under left dome of diaphragm. But if you see under the right dome of diaphragm, then pneumoperitoneum may, might be done, intestinal perforation, anything peritonitis by gas forming organism, and uh, another condition what is known as chilidity syndrome, where hepatic flexor herniation is there. Uh, as you see this example, you find air in below both the diaphragm. This was a classical example. In our time, a lot of artificial pneumothorax, uh, pneumoperitoneum used to, pneumoperitoneum used to done to control the hemophysis. That's an example of one that example. And then uh, this is example, you know, gas below the right dome of diaphragm. Gas below the right dome of diaphragm is a very notorious thing, but Sometimes in chilidity syndrome, this may happen. It have no symptoms. About the heart, same thing. You need to want to know the border, size, and shape. Everything you have to read. And many times we are perplexed with the size of the heart. And there are many methods to see the size of the heart. 
one is most important is cardiothoracic ratio. Uh, cardiothoracic ratio is made mainly less than 50%. And you measure the cardiac ratio, you measure the thoracic and divide it, it should be less than 50%. Transverse diameter of the heart, if it is more than 15.5, you may straight say yes, there is a cardiac. Difference between two identical X-rays. If suppose somebody has a cardiomegaly, has, has now improved, then to say that difference between two identical, this identical word is very important. Suppose one film is done in expiration, another is inspiration, that, that is not identical. Both identical films, if the difference is more, less than 1.5, then it is normal in size. Otherwise, if it is more, then it means the heart has size has changed. Uh, my un, one other YouTube lecture I have uh, is how to measure this cardiothoracic ratio. Usually I have demonstrated in this YouTube lecture by paper method. It was devised by me. You can very easily see. Otherwise, you can see and decide. Like you see here, there looks to be apparent cardiomyopathy. I still remember this. This lady has hemoptysis. Somebody has prescribed anti-TB drug. But when I saw the X-ray, there is a cardiomegaly. And the, the, this pulmonary conus area is prominent. So this was, when, when I put a stethoscope over the heart, I find there's a mid-diastolic murmur. So what I'm trying to say, by quickly seeing the X-ray, you may find that there's some problem in the heart. Hemoptysis can be occur because of the heart lesions, especially the mitral stenosis, and this was the careful. And then you look for high level. As I said that, you know, here in this, this is the left hilum and this is the right hilum. And in left high, it appears that left hilum is looking prominent. Why it is prominent? If you see here, there's a rotation. This is a left anterior oblique rotation. So same same hilum is maybe prominent. Here it is there. So what I'm saying, always check for rotation before you comment on the hilum side. So these are the examples of hilar lymph nodes. One side, this is a bilateral hilar lymph nodes. Case of sarcoidosis. Mediastinum also you have to look for superior, anterior, middle mediastinum, and posterior mediastinum. You know, mediastinum divide into superior and inferior, and inferior mediastinum divide into anterior, middle, and posterior. So you have to look for mediastinal structure. As you see here, there is some mediastinal shadow. Apart from that, he has some soft tissue shadow also. So he has a multiple lymph nodes outside the chest and within the mediastinum and was diagnosed as a case of limbo. And you know, after a chemotherapy cycle, his lymph nodes, everything has regressed within seven, 10 days. That is how people say that lymphoma melts like ice. So you can see in this excerpt. So then another multiple, multiple lymph nodes in potato, like multiple potatoes has been put in the mediastinum and these are multiple mediastinal lymph nodes. In India, many times they turn out to be tuberculosis. This is another mediastinal shadow, you know, mediastinum appears to become prominent. And when you have invasive patient, what we found that in lateral view, what we find, we can, we, we, can, we can demarcate that something is here in this, around the vertebrae. So when, when that is a posterior mediastinum, essentially. And when you see the AP view was done, you find there was a lot of intervertebral disc problem and it was finally diagnosed as POTS spine with, with paravertebral abscess. So sometimes these, these pictures may also present in a routine radiology. Another thing is what we say is mediastinal emphysema, air in the mediastinum, many signs have been demonstrated and that may occur 
and when they when you find air in the mediastinum you may also find air in subcutaneous vein that is how it is you continuous diaphragm sign because of the air both the diaphragms are very clearly visible then finally you have come to the lung parenchyma and when you see lung parenchyma when you read the x ray you should not talk in terms of lobes both the lungs are divided into three zones this first lung the end of lower border and anterior end of the second rib and this is second line is on is same point the fourth rib. so this is upper lobe this is this is upper zone this is a middle zone this is a lower zone and this can be further divided into central part of it and peripheral part of it then this is parahyalur peripheral this is a paracardiac and so this can be divided and you see in this film was done in expression so only upper and middle zone is visible lower zone is not visible and when you find a shadow uh, involving one of the lung then like this you know this was a radio opaque shadow involving whole of the lung without any mediastinal shape trachea is normal heart is normal so this is nothing but a consolidation and then you find that there is a mediastinal there is a radio opaque shadow mediastinal shift towards opposite side like heart has come this was a massive pleural effusion and if the mediastinum is if you find a radio opaque shadow with the mediastinal shift on the same side you know trachea is shifted heart has also come this is known as collapse so radio opaque shadow with mediastinal shift is a collapse and if it is shadow is heterogeneous shadow again with the mediastinal shift on the same side you know diaphragm has been pulled up trachea is also there heart is also there so this was a fibrosis so with difference between collapse and fibrosis collapse is usually radio radio opaque um, shadow and radio opaque shadow homogeneous and in uh fibrosis there is a heterogeneous sometimes lungs look more black what we call it as hypertranslucent shadow here in this moment this this lung looks more hyperlucent on very detailed history and bronchoscopy this was obstructive emphysema because of the foreign body on the left side and when the foreign body was removed then lungs have become normal then in x ray most important finding is the cavity and when you see that cavity usually present usually how, how to define cavity two third of its wall should be seen bronchoscular marking should be absent within that area or it should be reduced and there might be air fluid level these are the three characteristics two are there in everyone but third may or may not and then uh, in, uh, if, if the cavity is present in the upper zone then the main the differential diagnosis are too many but main issue what lies is i say that if tuberculosis if the cavity is the upper zone tuberculosis should be the first diagnosis and if the cavity in the lower zone same cavity then tuberculosis should come in the end under like lung abscess bronchitis so many things may happen amoebically cavitating lung cancer so everything can be there here you find that there is a cavity and there are infiltrates this is typical of bilateral tuberculosis here you find again a cavity with the fluid level so all the features are visible and his sputum was negative he was cough and large amount of expectoration so it was pneumonia which underwent cavitation when treated for about 10 to 15 days you know everything has disappeared so that was collapsed lung this is another you know cavity heals by sometimes open methods so a cavity persist and in this persistent cavity it becomes thin wall sputum vitam negative what is called open negative syndrome 
And in open negative syndrome, this is an example of healed cavity. One of the commonest complication is some rounded light shadow that appears in that open field spaces, what we call it as aspergilloma. In this case, you see that aspergilloma is moving. This is a PA view. Uh, this is the uh, another view when it has moved other side, lateral, uh, left lateral decubitus view was done. And then this is a tendon bug position when you the, the ball has moved. And this is another picture with cavity. Cavity in India, upper zone, I said tuberculosis should be most common, but that doesn't mean that every case of cavity in the upper zone would be tuberculosis. To be very careful, NTTV drug was prescribed by someone. And after about two months, the size of the cavity has increased. And you see in the CT was done and that has shown characteristic of a malignant cavity. What are the characteristics malignant cavity? It would be very thick wall. It should be an eccentric cavitation. Cavity is deviated on one side. And inner walls could be very irregular here. He did all the three features are met. And finally, we did bronchoscopy and we find growth. It was proven as lung cancer. This is another, another, another lesion, what you call is water lily sign. This was a ruptured hydrated cyst. The hydrated cyst were also present here. And uh, uh, miliary shadows, you know, very small from pinpoint to 5 mm size which are distributed both lungs systematic, symmetrically, and uniformly. Miliary shadow means smaller shadows uniformly distributed in both lungs. And there are hundred more than 100 reasons of miliary shadow. Many times we say miliary. Yes, miliary tuberculosis in India is the most common. So it should be at the top. Otherwise, there could be viral, fungal, parasitic, collagen disorder, cardiac, Neoplastic, all sorts of lesions could be because of the miliary shadow. This is an example of a 40 year old male, which has, you see that lot of multiple shadows, small shadows, bilaterally distributed, and CT also, you see these shadows. And when he was treated, he became well. Three months after ATT, most of the shadows had disappeared. Not always miliary shadow means miliary tuberculosis. You see in this case, it is also like a small, thin, small shadows uniformly. He was cough and breathlessness, no fever. And you see CT picture also showing small nodules. And you see that eosinophil count is 48%. So this was a case of an absolute eosinophil count more than 6,000. So this was in case of uh, what I am trying to say is a tropical pulmonary eosinophil. Rounded opacity, I think, um, uh, like uh, I'll just uh, quickly move and rounded opacity maybe because this was case of an insisted pleural effusion. CT scan has shown that this is a cystic lesion and when fluid was aspirated, this was insisted. Rounded opacity could be multiple. When you see multiple rounded opacities, always it comes at the picture of secondaries. But if you read the X-ray systematically, there is a breast shadow here. There is no breast shadow here. So you can say if you read it systematically, what is the advantage? You can see there is a rounded multiple opacities. It means secondaries and primary site was possibly breast, which was removed. So she had a CA breast and with this. Then there are calcified shadows. As a clinician, I always have said, you have to differentiate between calcified shadows and soft tissue shadows and soft tissue. The source of calcification may be intrapulmonary, may be extrapulmonary, may be exogenous outside, like some foreign body has been brought into it. Here you see case which has got calcified lesion, old tuberculosis, and then he developed cavity with cough, high fever, large lung abscess, and which was treated with antibiotics. You know, calcified lesion will persist, but acute lesion have subsided. This was heel TV with lung abscess. 
This is another tuberculosis, another way of tuberculosis healing is by calcification. You know, this lady has past history of tuberculosis and you see some curd has been spread in the x-ray. So you find that, and if you see the history, she has already received adequate amount of tuberculosis. But she presented with hemoptysis. That doesn't mean that she will require anti-TB drug again. If she has been treated properly in the past, only healed lesion can have hemoptysis. That is what you have to understand. And healed lesion will just have a supportive treatment by hemoptysis. No other anti-tuberculous drug. This is again example of a plural blocks, plural calcification. Old history of empyema, you must think. There must be sometimes extrathoracic calcification, extrapulmonary, like even ribs may calcify it, postural cartilage may calcify it, callus formation around ribs may be there, many things that could be there. Breast tumor may calcify it. And this is, you know, this is here, you know, first costal cartilage, both the rib has been calcified. Sometimes people do confuse with tuberculosis. So, so that was the, uh, then, then you see that he has a multiple uh, calcified shadows around the ribs. And that was a callus formation on detailed history. He found that he had a sustained a severe trauma during childhood. That may be the reason for this old one. Even from a, a, a calcification from the uh, from outside, like inhaled foreign bodies, like some somebody has uh, inhaled pin metal pieces, radiopaque dyes sometimes are there, which is visible. So iodized dial, traumatic foreign body may be there. So all things can be visible in the chest X-ray. This is the example of one you see here: multiple uh, small shadows hard shadows, which is there also, and it was finally known as, he has a dysphagia, so his, his barium solo was done, barium solo was done to, to visualize esophagus, barium has gone into the tracheobronchial tree, it means there was a tracheoesophageal fistula, and that has led to the, uh, that bronchus has Dye has reached into the bronchus, that was the bronchoscopic view. And so any towns, such type of shadows, they are visible, you have to take full history and find out. And then uh, you find that um, the uh, azygous fissure is also here, if you see carefully, I don't think, here is a azygous fissure, this is abnormal congenital fissure. And sometimes what happens in azygous fissure, clearly visible when there's a fluid in the gyrus fissure. Here you see fluid is here also. So the gyrus fissure is a part of pleura, so fluid also is here. And after treatment, you know, when fluid has disappeared, a gyrus fissure will remain, it is a congenital condition, but it will reduce in size. This is the CT picture of a gyrus fissure, if you are interested. This is a horizontal fissure, have a fluid, very common in cardiac failures. And then uh, loculated pleural pleural infusion may be loculated like parietal one. You see here in CT where two, two, two loculations have been there. And then multiple loculations are there. So I would like to end at this stage because we have already about four o'clock. So I'll skip some of the slides maybe whenever we see the uh, next presentation. I'll come, I'll come to end of my presentation. I'll have another, another series of these very interesting chest X-rays and this. Uh, today, basically, I dealt with how to approach a chest X-ray. And my take home message is always has been, in must, you must look chest X-ray systematically. If you are not very experienced one, experienced person can afford global, but if person, you are not very experienced, then you must look very systematically. Everything, technical points as well as the anatomical points. And you believe that sometimes single x-ray may not be sufficient. Sometimes other views are required. Many people are not habit of calling with or calling the patient with old x-rays. Please 
see the old x-rays that might you help you in deciding the diagnosis and further treatment and not only x-ray can tell you everything think of other radiological investigation think of other investigation not only radiology you've seen ct picture other investigation bronchoscopy like this and overall if you still not clear in your radiology think of a clinical which people are forgetting that's why i put put the new tube how to take history so if you take the history many points you will come out to you and you may you may may think what is this abnormality and with this uh, uh, thank you very much and once again i thank the lupin for supporting this endeavor for teaching you know teaching is something which is very uh, important it gives you a lot of uh, uh, very satisfaction and when you educate people who can ultimately take care of the community who can help at least poor people with these few words i thank you very much and if you have any question i love to answer now i think i'll i'll answer my slides and then uh, if you have any question stop share ni answer stop share no uh, so i have just uh, uh, answered my slides i am here it is already about 4 o'clock but still if there are some questions i can i think next one more class of this uh, because half of the presentation is still left so next time anyhow we will try to see those interesting cases it's a very interesting um thank you so much sir for a, uh, such a nice interesting x ray uh, case discussion with the audience uh so i think uh, all the audience learned a lot from uh, your x ray session sir so sir we have some of the question from the audience side uh, yes. first question is uh, what are the advantages of the chest x ray over the ct scan you know the first advantage of chest x ray that it is cheaper right it can be done easily also x ray cannot tell everything but many of the information you may derive from chest x ray if you know how to read chest x ray especially in the light uh, era of the ct scan somebody wrote an editorial murder of chest x ray but i believe that country like ours where money is the issue every people cannot afford ct scan then you should read you should know how to read chest x rays and many of the information what a ct can derive you can also derive uh thank you so much sir uh, there is a second question from the audience so how to differentiate between the old and the new lesions old and new lesion that's very good yes. question i believe you know especially with when you talk about tuberculosis is it a new to new lesion or it is a healed lesion now healed lesion what actually healing is done by two three process in tuberculosis one is by calcification i have shown you the calcified shadow they look more white more harder like somebody has spread milk or curd in the chest x ray soft tissue shadow lower density so that is how you do how you differentiate between harder shadow and that is very important to differentiate because many times we have seen that healed lesions may also have hemoptysis so so you have to make this differentiation of course final differentiation comes from sputum examination culture examination everything everything we have to take i said in the last slide that everything we have to take together then but but by visually there is a there is a clear distinction between uh, between new lesion and the old lesion uh thank you so much sir uh, there is another question from the audience so uh, in the pregnant woman there is a uh, there is no recommendation of the x ray uh, in any con any respiratory condition so uh, suppose uh, so what are the precaution needs to be taken if there is a requirement of the x ray in the pregnant woman usually what we see that first 3 months are very important 12 weeks 
And in that 12 weeks, if you can avoid the X-ray, it is well and good. But suppose you cannot avoid, X-ray is there, then, then with the proper seal and everything, you have to write down to the radiologist. They will use proper seal and then they can X-ray. But the first choice, if it is avoidable, you should avoid. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the, I think maybe uh, this may be the last question. Uh, so what are the hidden areas we should uh, be careful about in X-ray, chest X-ray? You know, many times uh, we see chest X-ray PA view. And in PA view, there are many hidden areas. Like I have shown you example uh, behind the clavicle. Something is behind the clavicle. That area may not be visible in the plain X-ray. Plain, plain chest X-ray. There, either you do a lordotic view or you do a CT scan, then that area may be visible. Another hidden area is the retrocardiac area. If behind the heart there is some shadow, it may not be visible. For that, I think the lateral view, if you do a lateral view, so that area must can be visualized very clearly. So these are the two main areas which I believe are the common hidden areas. Sometimes when X-ray is done, in a full expiration, not done in a full inspiration, then di the diaphragm may come up and that, that area may be hidden, but that is the poor quality chest X-ray. That's not the usual chest X-ray. But the poor quality chest X-ray is not very uncommon. In this country, we see many times films have been done in the rotation, Films have been done in not in the full inspiration. So all those things are there. You have to discount those things. Uh, what I used to say, if the quality of the X-ray is not good, please throw that X-ray in dustbin. I used to do like this. I've done it for last more than four decades, get an another X-ray done. Then I used to say, if I can, it is it, there's, a, there's a difficulty in reading the uh, X-rays when it is done. So, uh, sir, we unable to hear you. Unable to hear? Uh, so, so, yeah, right now, uh, is it okay? It's okay. Uh, so, sir, we don't have, right now, we don't have any question from the audience sides. Uh, so, uh, do you want any, uh, do you have any closing remarks from your side? Closing remarks is, they you know that uh, when, uh, you know, X-ray is a very routine thing. Every, whether you are a physician, surgeon, super specialist, X-ray is required. You have to see the X-ray. And uh, you know that radiologists, what their report is, they see black and white. In Western countries, radiologists are provided with good history. Then they will be able to interpret X-ray in much better way. That's why in India, what happens? Uh, clinician read the X-ray much better than the read because I. What is advantage with me that I have full history? Ideally, the radiologist should have been provided that history, but it is very unfortunate. At least in our part of the country, North India, you know, in in other parts of the country, the radiologist. Since they are provided with good history, everything they could, their, 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 their reporting could be very good. But in some part of the country reporting, because the, that is not their fault, because since they don't know what is the symptom like, what type of condition is. So whatever black and white he sees, he reports. So it is part of a clinician to look for it. So what I'm trying to say, always X-ray reading should be backed with the clinical the parameters, maybe history and examination. And then if you order an X-ray, you know, before you order the X-ray, I always say, you should know in your, you should know beforehand why I'm ordering this X-ray, what I wanted to see. If you, that area, if you wanted to see, it will be, you'll be able to better interpret it and better diagnose. That is my take home message. So whenever you order, think before twice. And then you see that why you are ordering and then read the X-ray carefully 
And if there is any doubt, you get another X-ray done, you get other views done, you get another radiological investigation done, you get other investigations done, I said in my last slide, and even if you have a doubt, you must see what is the clinical scenario. And then you should be able to get a better idea of what X-ray abnormality is. That is, I think, what I have to say. Okay, sir. Uh, so, sir, so there are no more questions from the audience side. So, can we close the meeting? Yes, yes, why not? Thank you very much. Yeah. So, 